In this tutorial, I'm going to cover using this Roland foot pedal with the brain. Um, and I'm going to use, this is basically going to be my MIDI controller. Instead of using a knob or a slider, I'm going to use this uh, to act as a knob or a slider so I can use it for effects, volume, um, any kind of continuous control, crossfade. Uh, so basically, uh, what I'm going to do is connect this to the brain. This is a real simple tutorial. Um, you don't really need much to get this. You just need this cheap uh, Roland foot pedal. This is the Roland DP8 uh, foot pedal. Um, and you're going to need a brain and you're going to need a ribbon cable. Uh, I'm going to be using this jack to connect the uh, Roland foot pedal to here because eventually I'm going to use this as a part of a bigger controller. Now with our products, of course you can use our um, boards, our BYOB boards to make a controller, uh, but you're not lim limited to that. You can use touch sensors, distance sensors, motion sensors. Uh, really this was designed so you can create the control surface that you wanted that didn't exist. Um, and this is a perfect example of that. So eventually I'm going to create a controller with a 4x4 grid of buttons using the BYOB. Uh, and uh, I'm going to have a bunch of these jacks on it so I can just plug in these different foot controllers. So I have my uh, button pad and then I also have my uh, foot controllers. I'm going to have uh, four foot controllers. Uh, so those are going to be my, um, my knobs, if you will, and the buttons are going to act as buttons. So Really, I just want to encourage people to experiment and try using alternative uh, devices to uh, act as a, your controller. So let's start with the jack. Um, this is a jack that I got. It's a uh, you got to make sure it's a stereo jack that works with this quarter inch plug here. Um, and uh, this I got from Mauser. Uh, you can usually find these from pretty much any electronic store. Um, just like the potentiometer connections, uh, if you use a rotor potentiometer, you'll know it has three connections. Uh, one wiper, one uh, ground, and one voltage. Uh, the wiper is basically what um, the signal that this sends out. So this is going to be zero and this is going to be 127. So if I'm crossfading, say this is A and this is B, um, the wiper is what sends that signal so you know that the, um, the crossfader is here or the knob is here and ends here. Uh, so you have your voltage, your ground, and your wiper. So I'm going to need to go ahead and, and uh, wire that and solder that connection. Uh, now, for my example, uh, I'm going to be using this for a zoom effect, uh, for video actually, and I want this to be zero and I want this to be 127. That's the that's the MIDI um, uh, continuous controller uh, range. So, um, depending on if I want this to be the high number or the low number is how I uh, wire this. Um, and I know this because I've uh, taken a multimeter and measured the resistance on here so I can figure out um, how I need to wire it. Uh, but basically if you're using this jack you have uh, you want to use these three pins right here so this one's going to be my ground, this is going to be my wiper, and this is going to be my voltage. So I need to take my ribbon cable. Uh, the first wire in the ribbon cable is always ground and I'm going to connect ground to the first pin on this uh, jack here. ahead and solder that connection. Again, for this tutorial, this is real DIY, so you don't need um, professional tools to, to do this. You could This is any electronic store, even Radio Shack would have tools you need to be able to follow this project. And this is just a cheap pedal here. I think it's, I don't know, around $30. Um, so if you have too many of them, obviously, it can get expensive. But if I had 64 of these. but. So, uh, first one's wire, that's the red wire, um, that's going to be ground. The second wire here is voltage, so I'm going to wire voltage here to the third pin on this jack. And you're going to want to check the technical specs of your jack. Um, again, make sure it's a stereo jack, but you want to check the tech specs from your supplier uh, so you know which pin is which. Um, you can always take a multimeter to it uh, with the pedal connected and find out as well. And then I'm going to take the third wire. Um, which is my wiper. Um, actually, the rest of these wires are wipers. Um, this is, we're only using one potentiometer. I only need to use this one wire. So I'm going to take this third wire here, connect it to the pin, solder this connection. This is real basic soldering. It's pretty hard to mess up because um, you're just soldering to these pins and you're using these wire so it's real simple. Alright so here we go we have this connected now we're ready to connect our foot controller to the board. 
Now, to connect a uh, uh, ribbon cable to the board, um, you're going to need to locate JP7, which is the first analog pin header. These are all the analog pin headers here. JP7 is the first one. It's labeled JP7. You need to take your ribbon cable. Make sure that the red line here on the ribbon cable lines up to the arrow on the board. Um, you can see all these pin headers on the board here. They all have little arrows next to them. The arrow indicates pin 1. So on the ribbon cable, the line, red line indicates pin 1, and the arrow indicates pin 1. You want to make sure those two are lined up, and you want to go ahead and plug it in. So once you have your ribbon cable connected, this is what it should look like. Once you have everything wired and connected, you're going to need to go ahead and open up your brain configure application. Uh, so you can tell the brain that just one controller is hooked up, one analog control is hooked up, and nothing else. Um, and you can save that configuration to the brain itself. So open up your brain configure, press the hardware configuration, make sure that the analog section here is the only section you need to worry about. It's set to number of analog controls one, because we just have this one controller hooked up to it. And it starts at the first analog uh, jumper, uh, which is JP7. So that has to be one. If you started at JP8, you would change that to two. But we're starting at JP7, which is the first one. Uh, hit send. Um, that sends it to the hardware itself. Hit save to brain. And now what that's going to do is save it here. So I don't ever have to open this brain configure application again. It's automatically set up next time I plug this in. So I'm going to set this to a video effect. So I'm going to go and I'm going to go here and open up Cell DNA, and I'm going to turn MIDI Learn on. Uh, I'm going to select this first knob because I want to use this as a as a as a video effect, and I'm going to press it, and that's going to set it to a MIDI Learn and turn MIDI Learn off. So now you can see every time I press this foot pedal, I am getting uh, the zoom effect. So the nice thing about this is I can be using my feet as expression controls. Um, you can also, I can just take this MIDI Learn off here, and I'm going to set it here to crossfade. And here we go. Now I am using the foot pedal as my crossfader. Um, so you can see how if I had a bunch of these connected, I could be using my feet to control effects, uh, the crossfade, um, tons of different things. So really, the brain lets you experiment and do cool stuff. Uh, that you couldn't do otherwise. Uh, here I have it set to scrub, um, so I'm scrubbing the video back and forth by using my feet. So that pretty much covers the uh, roll-in foot pedal tutorial. Um, thanks for watching.